So I'd like to talk for a couple minutes about the future of free speech, basically because I'm worried about it. At least in our country, free speech is losing its moorings on the left and the right. While most Americans grew up thinking free speech was sacrosanct and synonymous with the First Amendment of our Constitution, we're seeing erosion all around. And if free speech slips away in the United States of America, I'm not sure it's secure anywhere. All right, fine, maybe it's secure here in Canada because Canada is so perfect. <laughs> the First Amendment wasn't written for me. These words were spoken by an African-American student leader from a top public college when I asked her if she would approve the university withdrawing an invitation to a speaker who was known for racially offensive views. She was asked if that cancellation would raise concerns under the First Amendment. First Amendment wasn't written for me. Her words were jarring. A young, educated, talented person so alienated from and indifferent to the foundational freedom that underpins our Bill of Rights, our democracy, and our society. I, too, I, I studied law, and I felt that former law student in me just cringe. But gradually, listening to her, I came to understand that the First Amendment wasn't written for me meant two things. First of all, she meant that as an African American, her forebears would have been considered three-fourths of a person at the time free speech was written into the Constitution. When rights were being handed out and guaranteed, they wouldn't have been at the table. She meant something else, too. When free speech is invoked these days, it's often to protect expression that is offensive to a particular group. It might be someone saying, go back to where you came from, or failing to use preferred pronouns. That can't be punished because free speech. Such speech is, of course, protected legally. But when the only time free speech is brought up, it's to safeguard speech that you find offensive, you might start to wonder if this principle was meant for you. These doubts and the idea that free speech is just a smokescreen for hatred have taken hold across college campuses, newsrooms, publishing houses, and dining tables. Speakers are disinvited, books withdrawn from publication, a federal judge speaking at Stanford was shouted down and silenced at the law school. The author Walter Mosley wrote of being in a Hollywood writer's room and getting called in by a human resources officer at the uh, entertainment company who said, Mr. Mosley, it's been reported that you used the N-word in the writer's room. He replied, I am the N-word in the writer's room. Someone in the room had called HR and said that the word made them uncomfortable. Mosley asked, as far as I know, the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence assure me of both the freedom of speech and the freedom to pursue happiness. How can I exercise these freedoms when my place of employment tells me that my job is on the line if I say a word that makes somebody, an unknown person, uncomfortable? While the government is not dictating who cannot, cannot, can and cannot speak or what they can say, the prospect of being fired, shouted down, or vilified online can be plenty chilling. So it's not to say that there isn't legitimacy to the rationale. It's not to say that we don't have to drive forward a more equal and inclusive society. But when those values come at the expense of free speech, we all lose. Since 2021, we've been confronted with a new threat to open discourse, mostly focused on schools and universities, but not just. More than 4,000 book bans and a raft of state legislation curtailing what can be taught and studied in American classrooms. In some counties in the US, one person, it doesn't even have to be a student or a parent at the school, can lodge an objection to, the, to a book 
and get it withdrawn from classroom and school libraries across an entire county. They don't have to detail a complaint. They don't even have to have read the book. And this is what we're living with. So authors like Toni Morrison, James Patterson, Art Spiegelman, and even Anne Frank are being banned. Overwhelmingly, these book bans target authors by, uh, books by and about people of color and LGBTQ narratives. Turns out Canada's Margaret Atwood and Rupi Kaur are among the most banned. The, the banners knew Canada didn't want to be left out. 17 US states now explicitly limit what can be taught and studied in the classroom. They ban things like instruction on diversity, equity, or inclusion, or history lessons that might make people feel guilty on the basis of their race or their privilege. We call those educational gag orders. While the First Amendment is supposed to protect us against viewpoint-based suppression of speech, banning or punishing speech on the basis of whether you're for or against Donald Trump or COVID vaccines, these laws have their have viewpoint right in their bullseye, targeting speech that politicians like Florida Governor Ron DeSantis decry as woke. So we're seeing the informal, spontaneous censoriousness of the left speaker shoutdowns, claims that offense equals harm, met with out and out censorship on the right. How do we escape this tit for tat battle of assaults on speech? It's even now uh, a lawsuit that's been filed by Disney because uh, the Governor DeSantis is trying to punish the company and uh, almost shut down Disney uh, because of their uh, opposition to Florida's don't say gay law. It's gotta demand leadership. If we're gonna have, if free, if free speech is to have a future in our country, we're gonna need university presidents, editors, publishers, media companies to insist and ensure that all viewpoints, left and right, get a fair hearing. Politicians need to stand up for free speech as a cause above politics. That's always what it was. Efforts to foster diversity, equity, and inclusion should span the gamut of individual differences, racial, socioeconomic, religious, ethnic, gender-based, but also ideological, political, and philosophical. We need to be introducing the norms and ideals of free speech to our students and citizens and teach them how to uphold these principles, whether in the lecture hall or out on the streets protesting. The escalating fight over free expression should worry us all. The greatest casualty in the battle may not be either progressive nor conservative ideas, but the principle of free speech itself. Thank you.